everybody. Um, I'm Marianne Stewart. I come here from Cypress High School, but I taught at Lexington for 15 years. So this op-ed lesson that I'm going to be talking about today comes is actually tested out with eighth graders. Um, and it comes to you via the National Writing Project. Um, so there's lots of resources if you want to know more about it. Um, you can look it up there. But basically, what is an op-ed? It is text or writing or like a letter to the editor, but it's the opposite of the editorial. So students are looking at respectfully, civically disagreeing with messages they're seeing in the paper. Um, and so its idea is to increase that polite discourse and understanding that it's good to communicate with those who you don't agree with because how are we gonna come to agreement or come to a place of solution-oriented citizenship if we don't learn to talk to each other? So that's the idea um, on the what and the why. And of course, the who is gonna be any access to any local paper you have where you can send your student writing to expand the audience as well as just the class reading each other's op-eds. I was lucky enough at Lexington our awesome newspaper teacher did an all op-ed issue of the paper um, about my second year into this so that she even included other students in the whole school. It was a really neat opportunity again just to see hey what do we think and what are the nuanced ideas not just like a yes or a no but that the issues we're all talking about and seeing have lots of sides. So the first thing we did was we looked at a lot of op-eds and students took a minute to get the impressions like what authors, you know, decisions are happening in this op-ed, um, to give them names. Like for example, one of them is just that op-eds tend to be short. And we would call that short writing. Why? Because they usually want to fit a lot on the page so that they can show multiple perspectives. So my students loved hearing like, yeah, you might want to make this short so that it has a strong impact. Uh, then we would read a lot of maybe op-eds about the same issue. So we get again multiple perspectives and then students would have a chance to organize those op-eds into a way that they could understand. So um, this one was about cultural appropriation and one student saw those articles as layers, right? And then they, she identified herself in that ice cream cone as like, I, I kind of agree with this one a little more. Some people are saying it doesn't exist. Some people are saying that it helps cultural evolve. Some people say that it only benefits those in power so here's what I think or some people will um, take like the student took the argument metaphor which we talk about that there's arguments that have been going on before we were alive you know they impact us and we contribute to them and they're going to continue going on forever even after we're gone so what can I contribute at this moment in time um, I love the tug of war one because I think that that's often what we experience in the moment with the issues that we see on the news right so once students are getting familiar with the genre then we um, did a nonfiction reading log so a lot of times in class you know we'll dedicate time to reading fiction reading novels which we really want to sustain but what about keeping track of our exposure to nonfiction. So students um, love using their devices for this, loved bringing in my school newspaper or other newspapers. You know, we have a lot of programs that get them to us for free. I always wanted to reach out to the high school paper, but now I'm out of high school. So um, and anyways, students, when they're tracking their nonfiction reading, sometimes they're just seeing one issue every day they choose to follow, or sometimes they're reading a different issue every day. But it's kind of interesting even for myself to see what happens when I peruse what's going on in the news. Um, and then also to do a mindful, this actually comes from Kelly Gallagher, but like a mindful headline search. So what are the local conversations versus what are the national conversations, international conversations, right? And what's happening? So looking at a lot of op-eds before we even jump into finding a topic and writing. Um, we, we can look back to find the topic through those searches um, and then think about structuring our writing. So I love current structures because students when you say okay it's not an essay they go well how do I how do I write it you know I don't know what to do right or how long does it have to be we go back to that which usually tells me they don't know what to do so I like these because I think they work in every subject matter where you just give them say hey the first sentence paragraph part is gonna be this my I think this um, here's why um, here's what I still have trouble with, you know, to acknowledge the other side. And then this is what I think now. This one's from Gretchen Burnaby, and she has tons of kernel structures. Um, they're amazing. A lot of them are based on like other documents, um, like historical documents. That way you can give a, a model of following this kernel structure. So 
then you know we get into the writing and then we we publish so these are from my class Padlet, but I just love the different variety in topics. So eighth grader is going, um, should we pay for temporary housing? Um, Cyberbullying in local communities. Is coffee gonna have a cancer warning? Um, is the cure for depression better a uh, gun control law, you know, to create a safe environment? Uh, the Texas school district threatens to suspend students who protest during school hours, and America is the gun, right? So you get this huge variety because they've been following along in their reading logs. Also, I noticed just an unattended outcome is you get these great headlines because they've been looking at all these headlines for a couple of weeks. Um, and again, these are more, more from my students. And what we did with this is we went on to look at each other's articles, we read and reflected on our own writing and reflected on the other students' op-eds. And then students use this to form teams for their civic action project. So, you know, what are the issues that were talked about in this room in our Padlet? What were the issues that we we're writing about and caring about? Then who in this class is your ally or, or is thinking the same way or who is thinking about the same issue but in a different way that you guys could put together a really like interesting project together because you're going to have a lot of viewpoints present. So students then um, from you know saying these are the topics that we, we care about and then who's willing to lead something on that topic and then the students would join so almost like an ed cafe way of joining teams about topics based on these op-eds. So, I tried to keep it at five minutes, and I think I went over. I'm not quite sure, but I did my best. But you guys, now, if you have any questions for me, or if you want to know more about it, um, you can go on the National Writing Project College Career uh, and Community Writers Program. And what's really cool about that is you can see teachers all over the nation who have tried these op-eds. One of the best tips I got from a teacher in New Orleans was that you don't want to send, if you are going to the local papers, don't send them all at once. We know as graders of writing, we, when you get 160 op-eds, it's, it's crazy town. So if you um, want to get the maximize the publishing power, send 10 a month to your local paper or, you know, whole like do that yourself is I guess a really powerful way to get more op-eds in the paper so okay question time